Hello, welcome to Deep Calls in the Deep. I'm your host, Jeremy Lopez, here, and I'm excited about what God's going to say and do in this next season of our lives. You know, for a long time, I've been asking the Lord, Father, what are you doing in this season? What are you doing in that season? But one thing I've realized in my life is God is doing uh, different things in different seasons, but there's one establishment, there's one gift that lasts forever, there's one movement, if you will, that is sustained in the earth realm from the very beginning to the very end. You know, God says, I know the ending from the very beginning, which basically means God knows knows everything that's happening and there's one strategy, there's one key, there's one weapon of warfare that shall always remain from the beginning to the end. You know, even in his word, he never says his judgment endures forever, but he did say my mercy endures forever. But there's one strategy, there's one key that will unlock everything in life. And that one key is the strategy or the power of love. You know, there's a sword of a Lord and that sword can be brought forth in God's word as something that can harm, as people use the word of the Lord for judgment or condemnation, or that sword of the Lord, which is His word, can cut asunder between soul and spirit. Now, what does that mean when the Bible says in Ephesians that that sword can cut between soul and spirit? It means it's a sword of the Lord that brings forth the love of God, the agape of God. God's word is a big love letter. From Genesis to Revelation, it's a big love letter. And this love letter, this sword, is that of the divine love that no matter what situation you're in, if you're trying to overcome the enemy in your life, if you're trying to overcome some type of addiction, if maybe you're just going in a place in your life where you're hurt, you're rejected, you're fearful. No matter what it is in your life, there's one strategy, there's one key, and there's one sword that can break the power of anything and everything in your life. The same sword that can uplift you is the same sword that can bring you to a place of divine rest and peace. And that sword is that of love. The Bible says that faith, hope, and love endures, but there's one key, there's one strategy among all three of those or that in, is included in those three. It says there's faith, there's hope, and there's love. And the greatest weapon of warfare, the greatest strategy, the greatest key to these three dimensions is that of divine love. Love is the answer to everything. Love is not a, a, a sound. Love is not a word. Love is an action. Love is a corresponding action behind our faith. It's a word that we should be able to live out daily. Now the scripture reads in Romans chapter 8 in verse 37 in the NIV, it says, No, in all these things we are more than conquerors through Him who loved us. For I am convinced that neither death nor life, neither angels nor demons, neither the present nor the future, nor any powers, neither height nor death. Now hear this next part out. I want you to get in, in your spirit. Nor anything else in all creation will be able to separate us from the love of God that is in Christ Jesus our Lord. So it says here, there's nothing in creation that can separate you from God's agape, from God's ultimate unlimited supply of love, which means when people come to you, you know, we're in a time in a season of our lives in history where we've got a lot of things going on in planet Earth. We're finding out things about people's personality. We're finding out people, uh, you know, through war. We're finding out people through different countries, how they live their lives. We're discovering humanity, the, the ups and the downs, the goods and the bads. But one thing I have realized is this is a season not to sit here and engage in a defensive mode. See, a lot of people feel like they have to defend God. You have to defend the Bible. God has never told us in His Word we have to defend Him. Last time I checked, God's a big God. He can take care of Himself. He doesn't need people to defend Him, nor do we, uh, are we called to defend His Word. We're called to stand in righteousness. We're called to be Christ in the earth. And who is Christ? My, here's, here's what I'd like to ask you. If I ask you, who is God? What is God? What is the a strategy of God? Why did God come to earth? All of those questions should be summed up in one word and one word only, and that is God's love. Why did God come to earth? Because God so loved the world. Uh, who is God? God is love. What is the mission, the purpose of who God is and what it, why He does the things He does? So he does everything based on one thing, that is love. God's Word said, I honor my word above even my own name. God's name, His name itself is Jehovah Rapha, the God that heals us. Jehovah Nisi, which means His banner over us, which is ultimately love. He is Jehovah Jireh, my great provider. 
He's our physician. He is our comforter. He is Jehovah Nisi. He's all these things wrapped up in one. But did you know if you break down every single solitary uh, name of God, why is God Jehovah Rapha? Because He wants to heal us. But why? Because He loves us. Why is he, why is he Jehovah Nisi, the banner over us? Because he makes it plain in another scripture that banner over us is love. So see, even the names of God boil down to because I'm love. So if God honors his word even above his own name or titles, and yet his own name and titles even bring forth the definition of the character or the personality of who he is, which is divine love, then he says, I honor my word even above my own name, and my name alone is love. How much more do you think his word speaks to us in every area and every level of our lives, and that is that of love? So he says here, he says, nor anything else in creation. So there is not even a person on planet earth who should ever separate you from God's divine love. When people come to you and say, well, you know what? You're different. This is wrong. This is right. This is how you should live this and that let me tell you something we are led not by people's opinions one thing I want you to get buried deep in your spirit humanity will come to you and if you don't control your own life they will control you if you don't listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd the Bible says we know the voice of the Good Shepherd we're led by the Holy Spirit and him alone if you don't hear the Holy Spirit leading other people mentors teachers pastors prophets if you don't hear the leading of the Holy Spirit leading you through them through love, dismiss it automatically. If you sense in your spirit that someone is trying to deviate you or tell you something to be of something that you're not, then let me tell you something, dismiss it. Because God ultimately leads us to the rim of love. Everything He does is that of love. So I want to tell you something. You know the voice of the Good Shepherd. Listen to the voice of the Good Shepherd and you will know that His voice will always minister to you, instruct you, direct you, guide you, and ultimately draw you closer into the arms of God through that of love. He longs to hold you in His arms. Why? Because He loves us. Not because He wants to, he wants to kill us, He wants to hurt us, because He wants to love us. 1 John 4, 7 and 8 says this, Beloved, let us love one another, for love is of God, and everyone that loveth is born of God. God even put love even before the word salvation. Did you get that? For everyone that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. So which means if you literally in your life, if you throw forth the atmosphere and the corresponding action of loving humanity, then you are moving in God. Listen to me now. I didn't say it. God said in His Word. For he that loveth is born of God and knoweth God. Why? Because God says, look people, I am love. So he put the word love there and knowing there even before salvation. Do we need to get saved? Absolutely. But the point he's making here is over anything and everything in, on planet earth is that of love. If you love people, you'll know me. When you love people, God will make sure he's leading you to him because he is that thing you're giving them. A lot of people in, in society give uh, a love. A lot of people know how to give love, but a lot of people, a lot of people don't know how to give love. So you can be out of God and still know how to give God or give love because of the fact you can not even be in covenant with Him and know how to give God and not even knowing what you're giving. Because if you truly love people with an unselfish agape love and say, I love you regardless, no matter who you are. And there are people, check this out, there are people in the world who know how to love better than that of the church. Now you know what, what I'm saying is true. Because the church is built upon doctrines, traditions that make the Word of God, which is love, of no effect. You have to come to the place Place where we are ten times wiser than the children of this world, which means we should outlove that and those people that God loves more than anybody in the secular world. So you want to know the kingdom message? It's time to love. It's time to love people regardless. God doesn't want you to go to them and tell them what they should do, line up their lives. No, you go to them as God and love them regardless. God's love. The Bible says we are drawn or led to or wooed by the Holy Spirit through the, through the uh, uh, loving kindness of God. So it's His loving kindness that draws us to repentance. So if you give somebody love, if you give somebody God, 
Let me tell you something. God's Word will not return back to Him void, but it will go and accomplish. It's sent forth to do the mission of the work of God, the accomplishments of God. So if you give somebody love, that Word has already got the DNA of God in it to draw people to repentance. So you don't have to correct them. You don't have to make sure, line up, get your lifestyle right, get this right, get that right. You give them love and love only, and that DNA inside that seed will be like that of an acorn or an uh, acorn of an oak tree. It is packed full of the definitions of repentance, righteousness, holiness, grace, mercy, peace. You give them love, God's acorn will see to it once it's buried in their spirit to get them where they need to be in their lives. Amen. What I'd like to do for a moment I want to be able to take a moment and just prophesy to a couple of people out there. We have people on Facebook, Twitter, YouTube, uh, XP Media, Identity Network, and so many other facets that God is taking our videos into the world. So I want to take a moment and prophesy to just maybe one or two of you because I want to be able to stir up the gifts of God that God's placed with inside of me to some of you. And the first person I heard in my spirit was that of Brian. And I began to hear in my spirit, the Lord says, Brian, God says, now is your season to begin to advance in your career. It's your season to advance the talents inside of your spirit. And God said, even right now, God says, you've been pushed back, you've been set back, and you know the will of God in your life was God wanted you to go forward, but you didn't, you couldn't discern the right season and to know when to go forward. But the Lord says, this is your season now. I'm breaking you open, and I'm causing you to come forth because now I'm breaking you through that breaker anointing, and God said, I'm opening up the door for you. Now's your time for advancement. Now's your time for your career, and now's your time to go forth. And God said, you knew it for the past seven years years that God was telling you, preparing you, and getting you ready to go forth to the greater works. But God says, now is your season. Now is your time. After a seven-year period, it's now officially over. God said, now I'm serving you the papers of the old to get rid of it, and I'm serving you the papers of the new to now advance in the career and the entrepreneurship I've laid upon your heart. God said, your family, even your two children, have been waiting and longing for Daddy to step up to the plate, and you've said, but I've got to wait on God. And God says, now and only now can you be that superhero that your children are looking for. Now and only now is that time where you can say, you know what, now I can be all that God wants me to be. God said, you've always been that hero to your children, but now you'll be able to actually put corresponding action behind your faith and do the thing God wants you to do. God is so pleased with you, Brian. I don't know you, but God is very pleased with who you are and how you've always heeded to His voice, even when it went against the flow of others telling you what to do. You've never went against that. You've always stuck to your guns, and that is the voice of God. The other person I heard was for Christy. And I keep on hearing the Lord say, Christy or Christina. But God says, Christy, God says, you're at a place right now where you're at a crossroads. And even right now, the fear, the anxiety that's gripped you, it's almost like there's a, there's a, there's a chokehold on you, but there's such a, a spirit of fear upon your life. And you're scared to even try it again to date. You're scared to try again to find another man. You're scared to try to do something again with your life. And God said, because you've, your heart's been ripped out and you've been left almost just scattered and dead, if you will. But God says, like the man of old, I sent people their way, and, and the Pharisees, the Sadducees, people didn't want to pick you up while you were left stripped and almost left for dead in the street. But God says, now I'm sending to you true mentors, true friends, true leaders who will gather you up, reclothe you, and put you back on the potter's wheel. And I heard the Lord say this, God says, you've loved once, you've loved twice, now you're going to love a third time. And this third time will be that of perfection. I see like a sentence, and I see at the end of the sentence is a period, and that period means I'm summing up the sentence. And so God says, this is your season, your time. God says, well, I'm finishing up the season. I'm finishing up the sentence in your life. That period means this. You're going to find the man with a plan, the man who will charm you, love you, and give you the desires of your heart. And this time you don't have to fear, and this time you don't have to fret, and you don't have to worry. God says, sit aside your anxiety, because this man is the real man for you, says the Lord. Amen. So I'm going to be praying for you, Christy, and for Brian. And I want to tell each and every listener right now, stay tuned, because we're going to be begin to get in this process of prophesying even on video in our broadcast as the Holy Spirit leads. You know, a lot of people say, well, how can you prophesy, you know? Can you just prophesy at will? Absolutely. Do you know why? Listen to me now. No 
good thing will He withhold for those that walk uprightly. There's nothing God will uphold for you. The Bible says those who hunger and thirst after righteousness, they will be filled. People tell me all the time, they say, well, how can you just prophesy at will? You know, uh, I say, you know what I say to them? I say, because the Bible says the spirit of a prophet is subject to, not God, but to the prophet. Does that mean we rule God? No. It means God says, I am dying to talk to, talk to you. I am dying out to love on you. I'm dying to talk and speak to all who ask upon me. What does the Bible say? Ask and it shall be given. See, those of you who write in for prophetic words, what are you doing? You're asking. And the Bible says what? You'll get. The Bible says knock and the door will be open. You knock, God's going to open the door. See, this is not something where you, you just, you know, give a pretty penny and God prophesies to you. No, it goes beyond flesh and blood. It goes to the place where God says, no good thing will I withhold for those. Ask upon me. You know the voice of the Good Shepherd. So we're going to dive into a season of me just spontaneously prophesying to some, maybe, uh, you know, a lot more than others in these videos in the future. So get ready. We're going to demonstrate this message that we're teaching along with the power gifts of God to prophesy, and many of you are going to get blessed in the next weeks and months and years to come. Amen. God bless you. Once again, tune into our weekly broadcast. Also, go to our website, identitynetwork.net. Let me prophesy to you. The only thing we ask from you is this. If you can, if you got Christ's love in your heart, just give a love offering. Give a donation. I don't care how big or small, just give to help our missions and help the funds here at Identity Network. And why is that so important to me and to you? Because my goal is to do this. Our goal here at the ministry is to love, first of all, second of all, to love, third of all, to love. Our goal is to love anyone and everyone that is drawn by the Holy Spirit of God and, draw, and God's drawing humanity. So join in with us in this great vision we have for this ministry. Help us to love one another as God loves us. Amen. God bless you. Have a wonderful day. We'll talk to you next week.